Good morning. morning. It's nice to have you with us here today. You received on the way in a little four by four card. Uh, Would you fill it in as I speak? Uh, Your attendance, any prayers you may have, and then when you're done with the card, at the end of the service, put it in the collection plate at the uh, back of the church if you would. Uh, A few announcements and then the prayer requests for today. Uh, The first announcement is that if you haven't yet, and I imagine most of you haven't, been down into the gym, I'd like to encourage you to go to the gym and stick your head into the kitchen. There's a major renovation we're doing in the kitchen. Uh, Sharon, what color do you call that, that they've painted it? I know she's here or about in here because she's in Narthex. I think it's periwinkle, and Pastor Baker thinks it's light plum. I've heard gray, uh, but they're painting the whole, it was like uh, uh, hospital green, and so the whole uh, stand rifle is painted the whole kitchen, and they're going to do a whole new uh, flooring on it. It's just, yeah, take a look at the work that they're doing. Uh, we're one of five schools that have gotten a technology grant, national te- technology grant, and they've been working feverishly all week long, pulling cable, putting in new technology. There'll be, there'll be uh, computer carts. Uh, Sharon, there's Sharon. What color is in, this, in the kitchen? What, what? What's the color in the kitchen? Right now? What's it called? The new, the new oh, color. The new I don't know if it's the color of the new paint. Okay. You haven't seen it because you've been down in Mexico for the last week. I just got back from the country. But they just showed me samples of it once and asked me a couple things and then off they went. Okay. So, All right. So we're encouraging everybody to go down. And yeah, it's going to look good, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> so we have that project underway. We have this technology project that's underway. Uh, we just signed uh, the material to increase the security on campus for our school, and, and Sharon's done all the work on that. So that will be started. Probably won't be finished until middle of October, but we're putting cameras in. We're putting a new uh, locking system on the exterior of the buildings in. That's all happening. Sam the Concrete Man will be here this next week. And all the damage that's been done on the sidewalks on the east side of the Circle Drive and on the main sidewalks, that's all going to be repaired. Uh, There was a very generous gift given uh, by uh, former members of our congregation that passed away. Their family wanted to give something in their memory, and they said, we want to fix the sidewalks. So that's also being done. We're making some progress with the fire alarm system. We're still under manual code, but there is some improvements that were done this last week, and we're still working that one out. And uh, uh, the school and the preschool are in session, back in place, starting this next week. It's starting. It's kind of exciting stuff. So all of those things we're praying for. In addition to that, we'll be praying for those that uh, have baptismal birthdays, this week, and there's a couple of them, I think, that are here. I think that's a Christian Peter. That's got to be a Christian Peterson. Is that right? Happy baptismal birthday. And I think the one, the other one is, the Diane F. has got to be Diane Fisher. Diane, is is that your baptismal birthday in July? I'm probably missing a few others there, but I was just reading them through last night while uh, Vicar was praying, going, well, that's Shannon Cambiato, I'm sure, on the Shannon C. So we want to keep those in our prayers. Uh, we are in the process of still looking for a director of Christian education to work with youth and children's ministry. We can pray for that. We'll be installing a brand new board of directors at this service, uh, a brand new governance system in the congregation. Exciting times. Um, Roger and Julie are celebrating their 40th anniversary. Uh, we talked about the school. We start confirmation orientation next Sunday at 4. And the opportunities, as we begin this new governance system, there'll be a boatload of opportunities that we will need you to volunteer for. So if you are not currently engaged or identified in in a ministry in this congregation, get ready, because we're going to be challenging you to step up and help us out. So we're going to pray about that today. Uh, The whole election process that took place in the state of Kansas, we want to pray about and over uh, this morning number of people that are in need of healing, and a number that we're anticipating the birth of children we pray for today. If you have other prayer requests, put them on that card, 
and put them in the collection plates at the end of the service. Those are our announcements. Uh, those are our prayer requests. Please rise. Let's sing a little bit more. get our service this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. be to God on high.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, the spirit to think and do always such things as are right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without you may be enabled by you to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. First reading is from Genesis, the 15th chapter. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to his righteousness. Our God is a God of everlasting promises. From everlasting to everlasting, our God is the Our second reading today comes from Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and being certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about the things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, He condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. 
For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, and Sarah herself was barren, wasn't able to become a father, because he considered him faithful, who had made the promise. And so, from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Praise the Lord. Please rise for the gospel. Today's gospel is according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat, about your body, what you'll wear. Life is more than food. Body is more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, and yet God feeds them. How much more valuable you are than the birds. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Since you can't do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon, all of his splendor, was dressed like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow it's thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? And do not set your hearts on what you will eat, or don't worry about it. For the pagan world runs after such things. Your Father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Don't be afraid, little flock. Your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions. Give to the poor. Provide purses for yourself that will not wear out, treasures in heaven that will not be exhausted, where no thief comes near. No moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as we continue to sing.
we pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and may the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I used the word last night and then discovered when I used it that it may be an okeyism that none of you know. Show of hands. How do you know what a spillway is? Oh, great. It's like a dam, only it's not. It usually is constructed so that when the water level gets to a certain height, it just spills over the top rather than opening ports at the bottom that you would on a, you kind of follow in that. The reason why I tell you this is because I'm going to use the word spillway in here in a minute. I don't want you all to go, because uh, if you don't get it, then the joke doesn't mean much at all. In the context of the readings over the course of the year, rarely do all three readings agree. Usually there is one, and it typically is the epistle, that's sort of a wild card. It doesn't fit with the other two. Typically the Old Testament matches somehow the gospel lesson, and then you have a sort of free text in the gospel or in the epistle that in case you'd like to preach on a different topic, it gives you that option. But over the last couple of weeks, what I've noticed is a real intentionality of bringing all three of those texts together. And if you were listening or if you were singing, you will have already caught the theme as the title of the first foil of the sermon would indicate. It's all about faith. It's all about faith. In a small town, there was a degree of collegiality among the clergy that you don't see in larger areas sometimes particularly crossing denominations like Roman Catholic and Lutheran and Baptist. But in this particular community, those three guys got together regularly, enjoyed each other's company, and decided one day that in the midst of the, the lull in the season that maybe they would go fishing. And so the priest and the two pastors headed off to the lake together. And as clergy are inclined to do, they soon began talking about deep theological truths, about the miracles that Jesus performed, and the teachings about faith recorded in Scripture. And they began to focus in on the passage where Jesus talked about the faith of a mustard seed, and that if one's faith were that minuscule, you could still move mountains to which the Baptist posed a challenge. I believe, based upon my perspective and my practice, that my faith is superior to either of the other of you, and I would like to put that to a test. We're going to drop our rods and reels. We're going to walk across this lake to the other side. And whoever actually, by faith, walks atop the water to the other bank, will prove their faith superior. The Lutheran and the Catholic said, you're on. And the first one to jump up to prove himself was the priest. Three steps onto the water, down he went. And the Baptist and the Lutheran just chuckled. The second one up was the Baptist, who is absolutely certain that his faith was superior to the other two. And he launched onto the surface of the deep, and he got no further than the Roman Catholic, and down he went. Both of them drenched in water. The Lutheran now is up, and he takes aim for the other side of the bank, and he begins to walk. And to the amazement of the priest and the Baptist minister, successfully arrives at the other end of the shore. Utterly amazed, they ask, how in the world did you do that? To which the Lutheran says, you have to know where the spillway is. <laughs> I'm glad I set that up well. Faith. Faith. 
Faith is not a work. It is not a feeling. And it's not some theoretical concept without practical implications. Paul is very clear in Ephesians that it is not by works you are saved, it's by faith. So let's set aside that faith is some work that we manufacture or we conjure along the way and by which we are saved, it's simply not true. Could you give me a definition though? What is faith? What is the essence of faith? For sure, I'll give you this much. It's a gift, a free gift. With no strings attached, it is a gift of God so that no one could boast. And if you were listening, listening to Hebrews chapter 11, just the first verse, you would have gotten the definition of faith as recorded in that section of Scripture. The biblical definition of faith at least according to Hebrews 11 verse 1, is this. Being sure of what you hope for, certain of what you do not see. It's not a work. It's not a quivering of your liver. And it's not some abstract theological concept. Faith is being sure of what you hope for certain of what you do not see. Faith matters. From cover to cover in the Bible, faith matters. It is a response to God's first love. It is a response to God's gift of grace. It is a response to the knowledge and the certainty that Jesus Christ sent His only Son into the world to save you from sin and redeem you as his chosen. It is a response to all of that good news that is ours in Jesus Christ. Faith matters. Luther said, faith is permitting ourselves to be seized, to be grasped, to be enveloped in the things we do not see. It matters. Abel is an example given in Hebrews 11. By faith, his sacrifice was better than his brother's, only because of faith. Not the substance of the sacrifice, but the faith. And Abraham, that Hebrews 11 talks so much about, responded to God's call to go. By faith, he committed himself to live in a tent. Guys, could you do that? Could you go home and tell your wife we're moving out of our house and we're moving into a tent? That takes incredible faith to be able to make that commitment and then stick to it. Abraham did by faith. They both walked by faith. Other examples? Enoch. The Hebrews 11 said did not suffer death. By faith, God took him to heaven. And we all know the story of Noah, the ark, the flood. By faith, Noah went into a construction project unlike any ever before or since. We walk by faith. The ancients walked by faith. Faith. It matters. It comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So take your fingers out of your ears. And listen to that which God would deliver to you. And deposit in you today. Faith is his gift. Purchased and won for us through Jesus Christ. And delivered to us by the power of the Holy Spirit but you have to have ears to hear, a heart that's open enough to receive it, and a mouth that's willing to confess it. 
Scripture says over and over again that those who have gone before us believed. They had faith. They held on to the promises of God, and it was credited to them as righteousness. They walked by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight or by feelings. Faith matters because it produces endurance. Luther said, we are saved alone by faith, but faith is never alone. It comes with other gifts as well. One of them, endurance. The life of a faith-lived person is a life of someone who is waiting on the Lord. And waiting demands enduring. It demands persevering. It demands patience. Because faith looks beyond the moment to the crown of righteousness that awaits all who hear the words, welcome home, good and faithful servant. The righteous live by faith, not by sight. And by faith we understand things that we cannot test and determine with accuracy or scientifically. We believe by faith that the universe came into being by God's command. He just spoke it, and it was done. By faith, we believe that God made what we see, what is visible, out of what is not visible. The Latins would call it ex nihilo. Out of nothing he made substance. And by faith, we appreciate that a day in the Lord's understanding is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day. And every day by faith, we fold our hands. And at the end of our petitions, we lift up a prayer that everything be in accordance with God's will. We pray God's will be done. And we believe God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. By faith, we have those understandings. And those understandings gives us gives us perseverance and endurance so that we can walk by faith, not by sight. Faith has a practical dimension. Amidst the theology, there's this practical application that is relevant every day of our life because we walk by faith, not by sight. Faith matters because It informs our priorities. It informs our perspectives in life. It's how we see the world around us by faith. Luther wrote, every week I preach justification by faith to my people because every week they forget it. Every week you should expect from this moment in the service that you're going to be pointed to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Every week. Encouraged to trust in Him, hope in Him, and live by faith in Him. And if we aren't doing that, then we have failed. Like Luther, every week, we need to go back to the cross. And we need to go back to the very practical reality that it is by faith we are saved. It is by the gift of God's grace that we are saved. So that none of us can brag or boast a gift, a free gift, not by fear. Fear is the antithesis of faith. It's the opposite of faith. We live by faith, not fear. People that apply common sense discover that it crumbles. Rather quickly it crumbles. And then there's this mad scramble to find some false sense of security in the face of the uncertainties and the fear of the unknown. But faith gives us the confidence to endure, to persevere, to hope past the moment we find ourselves in. We live by faith, not by fear. We walk by faith as Abraham walked by faith. Chose to live in a tent. Chose to wait for that moment in which God has revealed his promises in its entirety. 
That moment when finally he would have descendants as numerous as God had promised. The stars in the sky, the sands on the seashore. So the question for us today is, is that your lifestyle? Your perspective? Your priorities? Do they reflect saving faith in your life? I'll ask it a different way. Are you daily living out of a suitcase the way Abraham lived out of a suitcase? Are you building your life on the foundation that will not crumble, that's been laid for you by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Are you living by faith, not by sight, not by feelings, not by works? Faith matters because ultimately, it never disappoints. I can't think of another thing in my life that doesn't disappoint or doesn't have the possibility of disappointing. Faith never disappoints when it's anchored on our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Luther said, faith must trample underfoot all reason, all senses, and all understandings. Because by essence, it's none of those things. It is this calm and sure conviction that God is in control and that his every promise is for us, yes, in Jesus Christ. And that the victory, even though we feel like we're in the midst of turmoil and trauma, the victory is ours in Jesus Christ. Abraham lived to see some of the promises given him by God fulfilled. He saw his son's circumcision. With his own eyes, he saw that. He lived to hear God's invitation heavenward. He did that. But he did not live to see the temple and the assembly of the saints that the book of Revelation says can go beyond anyone's ability to count from every nation and tribe and language he didn't see that in his earthly life, but he believed it. In faith, he knew it would eventually be his. And he could never have imagined just how large his ancestry would become. I am certain he was thinking about connections and DNA. He could never have imagined how large his family would be through the gift of baptism through the waters of our Lord and Savior, by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit that adopt us also into that family and make us heirs according to promise. He could never have seen that in his lifetime, and yet he believed God's yes and his amen. You see, faith is being sure of what we hope for, certain of what we do not see. That means faith matters. And just, just beyond your sight, there is gathered the faithful with the angels and the archangels in that place already prepared in advance for us. Jesus says, I go there to prepare a place for you, and I will come and take you to be with me. The ultimate part of that teaching was he is the way and the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through Him. Just beyond your line of sight, there is that gathering of those who have gone before you and those who will follow you, who confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. In that place, He's already prepared for them and for you. Faith sees beyond the moment and to that hope that is ours in Jesus Christ. And just beyond the horizon, the ultimate Yes, that is ours in Jesus Christ. The final amen, that is ours, purchased and won by his death and resurrection on the cross for us in advance. Faith matters. And all God's people said, yes and amen. May the peace that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in faith until life everlasting Amen. Let's continue singing.
stand as we join together in prayer. Lord, we give you but your own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. I trust, O Lord, from thee. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together to worship you. We thank you this day for blessing Roger and Julie with 40 years of marriage. Continue to be the center of their relationship and guide their love. Lord, this day, as we gather and partake in your Holy Communion, we remember and give thanks for our baptism. We praise and celebrate the baptismal birthdays of Judy, Diane, Andrea, Elizabeth, Philip, Griffin, Christian, Susan, Andrea, Shannon, Kendall, and Diane. Remind us of our salvation through Christ and the waters of holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we pray this day for the search for a DCE here at Bethany. Bless the call process and guide those that are considering the position. Bless them with discernment and peace about their decision. God, we praise you for the installation of the board of directors this weekend. God, may their leadership bless this congregation and community as they serve you. Lord, in your mercy. God, we thank you for bringing us to the beginning of another school year in confirmation season. God, be with all the students, teachers, and staff as they get ready to teach, learn, and grow this fall. Bless their, bless their studies. Have them bring, their, bring them ever closer to you. God, as we also ask for your blessing on, the, on those considering and those that are already serving and volunteering for Bethany and the community. Lord, as they act as your hands and feet, guide them and strengthen them. God, as Bethany transfers into a new governance system, Bless us with the volunteers and help that we will need. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we know that all authority is in your hands. Be with those leading the state as the election results are in. Lord, have your love for all people and the sanctity of life be ever proclaimed by your church. Guide this state and nation through all votes and elections and help us move forward, ultimately trusting in you. Lord, in your mercy. God, we come before you asking for the healing, for your healing in our lives. Lord, we lift up all those that are struggling with physical or mental health issues. Lord, heal them in the name of your son, Jesus. We especially lift up John, Bob, Carrie, Patrice, Lisa, Donna, Emma, Donna, Janet, Marie, Angie, and Maria, and those we name in our hearts. God, bless your, place your healing hands on them and remind us that despite worldly struggles and pains, you, God, have overcome the world and secured salvation for us. Lord, in your mercy. God, we praise you for the joys and blessings you give us. Lord, we thank you for those who are expecting, namely Alex and Will, Evan and Stephanie, Julie and Chris, Edwin and Melissa, Matt and Andrea, and Zach and Hannah. Turn their hearts to you, God, and bestow upon them peace that surpasses understanding in this time. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
Lord, we lift up all for those, all of those for whom we pray, in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into I'd like to invite the newly elected Board of Directors to come forward. In the name of the Lord of the Church, the Redeemer, and he who gathers us into a holy assembly, the community of saints, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Dear beloved sisters and brothers in Christ, at a regular meeting of the Votive Assembly, our parish elected you to now stand before us and serve along with this parish's pastors in advancing God's kingdom within our community and to the very ends of the earth. The various ministries have been established by the church to strengthen and support the office and the work of the public ministry. Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, just as each of us has one body and many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, we who are many form one body. Each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a person's gift is prophesying, let him use it to the proportion of his faith. If it's serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it's leadership, let him govern dil diligently. And if it's showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Six questions. Do you acknowledge the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, both the Old and the New Testaments, to be the only rule and norm of all doctrine and life in the church? If so, answer yes. yes. Do you promise to uphold the Constitution and bylaws of this parish? If so, answer yes. Will you, trusting in God's care, seek to grow in love for all you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn your office with a godly life? If so, answer yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Do you solemnly promise in the presence of God in this congregation, faithfully to serve God's people as elected officers, in accordance with the Word of God and the three universal creeds of Christendom and the confessions of our church? Then answer, I promise. Are you ready to assume the work of this ministry? If so, answer yes. 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 You have heard the confession and the solemn promise of your board of directors. Will you perish, receive them, show them fitting love and honor, support them with your gifts and volunteerism and fervent prayers? If so, answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. 
As the holder of the office of the public ministry, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I install you as the board of directors of Bethany Lutheran Church and School in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. We pray. Almighty, most merciful God, we give thanks that you have sent your people true and faithful servants. Grant to each person here standing before us today direction, aid, and the counsel of your Holy Spirit that through the ministry of your church, the church may be nourished, sustained, and equipped for every good work and built up into you who is the vine, the chief cornerstone, the good shepherd, the head of your body, the church. Amen. Go then in peace and joy. The Almighty and most merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless and strengthen you to faithful service. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. I'd like to invite Aaron. Aaron, you're here somewhere. There he is. Because I told you, get ready for some challenges. And here's the first of the challenge. Aaron helps us lead the 1045 service. So we are in desperate need of volunteers, and um, you would be trained in sound and media. Um, it's extremely easy. If you can work your cell phone, you can work the soundboard, you can work the computer. It's just a matter of time. And so uh, I just want to give, give a value for this. I mean, every message needs a curator for that message. And the curation of the message of this house, the gospel, of the sermons that we hear, the songs that we sing, the facilitation of that message is media and sound. And so I want to invite you guys to be a part of that. Um, if you have an availability, we have a slide. Uh, if you could put the slide up there uh, from the beginning. Uh, send an email. to. Either of these emails, um, we're hoping to get you guys uh, signed up a once a month sort of thing consistently. And so please, please uh, consider doing this. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Honestly, from a pastor's perspective, we're absolutely valueless if they're not up there helping us out. So it is a critical position, and we have very few people currently serving. So prayerfully consider it, and if you think that's something you can do, you can turn knobs and, and do that sort of thing. Uh, we'd love to have you consider it. Said. Let's rise and sing. We now conf confess our Christian faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. So we confess with one voice, I believe in one God.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Bethany, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Amen. You may be seated.
Please rise. May this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. We pray. Almighty and everlasting God, blessed Lord and Savior, we give you all glory and honor and praise. You are the fountain and the source of all goodness. In loving kindness, you sent your only Son into the flesh, and we thank you that you have given us in this moment pardon and peace through the sacrament. We ask you not to forsake us, your children, but to rule our hearts and our minds by your Holy Spirit so that we may be enabled by faith to serve you constantly. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his countenance and give to you his peace. One more hymn. 